My name is Manan Sabir. I am the co-owner of the Juice Kitchen, uh, along with my wife, Joanne Sabir. Uh, I'm also, um, my, I'm 38 years old. As of July 19th, I'll be 39. Yep, uh, the history of the Juice Kitchen. Um, right now, you're in Lindsay Heights neighborhood. The Lindsay Heights neighborhood is, um, is a unique neighborhood. Uh, we landed, the Juice Kitchen landed in, the, in Lindsay Heights neighborhood October of 2015. October 2015 is when we opened our doors also. We were, we were, we're in existence for approximately about seven years now, seven years, so almost the day. Uh, due to my son having a condition, a genetic mutation called uh, ectodermal dysplasia. And ectodermal dysplasia, uh, for people who don't know, is a genetic mutation that doesn't allow some of the symptoms, don't allow the young people or the older people to uh, sweat, grow teeth, or much hair. Uh, which, in reality, doesn't allow you to expel many toxins. Uh, seven years ago, uh, he was holding all his toxins in, um, and then when you hold all the toxins in, that's your lymphatic fluid. Uh, it kind of it can build up in many different areas: uh, your lungs, your bronchial tubes, even your stomach, your bladder. Uh, this time it was in his lungs, and you can hear it. So what we did was uh, we 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 bought a juicer and we started juicing. And when we started juicing, we. Uh, uh, we discovered that, well, I, dis I discovered that uh, watermelon is an expectorant, and also um, apples contain a lot of fiber and pectin, pectin and natural sugar and, and fruit. So we juiced both of those together, and we gave it to him, uh, and 20 minutes later, he came down playing soccer. And from that point on, we knew that we had a product. But not just a product, but we knew that it was something that we could develop in order to help heal the community that is so inundated with uh, the, the garbage that we see on a daily basis, such as fast food, uh, such as alcohol, you know, and other uh, litany and display of drugs. So we wanted to make sure that we gave our son um, the antithesis to the, that influx of what we usually see in our community. Um, including the fact that, you know, the uh, average hospital stay for him would have been about a week and we didn't want to give him any over-the-counter medication. So the Benadryl, the wall drill, the all that stuff, which is something, it, it may help other people, but it just didn't help our family. So the Lindsay Heights, my personal belief on supporting black-owned businesses is uh, a way to, our goal is to understand that our communities, and especially this community in particular, the Lindsay Heights community, was once a Bronzeville type of community. So we had a number of black-owned or African-American-owned businesses in this community, from doctor's offices to law offices. We even had our, black, our own black mayor. Uh, and, and that was, we did that in response to the, the disregard of human life which in, we call racism. And we had to take away the stress of racism by developing our own communities. And so we developed our own Bronzeville. We had many different schools here that had uh, black male teachers, um, had many different um, varieties of, of types of sports and arts and extracurricular and auxiliary uh, um, activities in those in, in our schools. So what our, my goal uh, in this my goal and our goal for the juice kitchen was to develop um, some semblance and, and of that particular uh, renaissance that we had as a Bronzeville type of community. Uh, so if we did not do that, then we wouldn't be placing our footprint in the, the annals of time related to 
uh, related to black history. And so we're not just uh, a business, but we're, we're giving uh, history uh, another telomere. We're giving history another, another length in its DNA. So recycling black dollar, we recycle the black dollar by giving money to a business that business uh, then uh, pays its employees who are from the neighborhood, such as the, the Juice Kitchen. Those, that those employees then support their families or support themselves, such as some of the students that go here, they support themselves by going to school. Uh, some of the moms here or dads here, they support their kids. And it, it, it's a constant cycle. So that's what that's what supporting the black dollar is. Also, we want to make sure that we don't have we help to eliminate structural and systematic racism. And by educating our community through recycling the black dollar uh, helps in eliminating the structural and also uh, systematic racism. So. Uh, here at the Juice Kitchen, we're affiliated with a number of entities. Um, so I'll start with the first one. Our first one, we're in the Innovation and Wellness Commons. The Innovation and Wellness Commons is a resident-led collaborative vision of the neighborhood that we see here. In, or it's a reflection of the neighborhood that we see here in, uh, in Lindsay Heights. Um, we have a variety of individuals, our elders, to our young people. So uh, here at the Juice Kitchen, we're, we're affiliated with the Innovations and Wellness Commons. Innovations and Wellness Commons is a, uh, a property of Walnut Way Conservation Corporation. Walnut Way Conservation was started by Larry, Larry and Sharon Adams. We came um, into this property through Walnut Way and Larry and Sharon Adams, uh, who are rightfully the uh, founder, co-founder of the Walnut Way Conservation Corporation, uh, and also uh, co-developers as a part of the Innovations and Wellness Commons, along with the re residents that help lead the vision to develop this, this uh, phase one and also phase two of our uh, of our Innovations and Wellness Commons. So why am I called the Innovations and Wellness Commons? Because innovation and wellness go hand in hand. Uh, in order to become a changed person, you also have to innovate. Uh, in order to become uh, a, a holistic human being, and uh, our goal here at the at the Juice Kitchen uh, is to collaborate with as many entities as possible in order to uh, have a clear vision for our community, one that is not convoluted, one that is not toxic. Uh, so uh, we are affiliated with uh, not just Walnut Way, but also. Uh, MCFI, Morgan Center for Independence. Uh, we are affiliated with the Finding is Coming. Uh, we're affiliated with uh, SDC and we're affiliated with uh, Employee Milwaukee, which uh, helps give um, helps give teens and uh, another opportunity, teenagers uh, and also young adults, another opportunity at employment. People who haven't had a great career uh, path, but also have the desire to work. And so uh, we also have a, a good relationship with um, people such as G's Clippers, Pete's Food, food Market, uh, that's coming down the street, down the street on North Avenue, uh, Sabir's Karate Fitness, who uh, I'm part of Sabir's Karate Fitness. Uh, we also have a good relationship with um, just a number, of, a number of entities. We have a full list of people that we, we love to uh, have as friends. Um, because relationships start with a friendship. Uh, we have a good relationship with Alice's Garden. Uh, Alice's Garden is a fantastic, fantastic entity. We have a relationship with uh, Milwaukee Vincent, um, Milwaukee uh, um, North Division. Uh, we have a relationship with um, Seaford School. So, we, so we have a, a strong relationship with with as many people as possible. The Milwaukee Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks, they're, they're huge in uh, helping to determine um, what race we should be running. <laughs> and uh, uh, City of Milwaukee. So uh, the mayor's office, Mayor Barrett, uh, um, uh, Herb Cole uh, is a part of this community. 
uh, we have a just a number of number of people that we uh, affiliate ourselves with the Milwaukee Brewers. So, and we thank all of those entities, uh, including I, I, and uh, including, and I'll say it again, Walnut Way, who's given us the best chance in becoming a, uh, a Stonehenge in this community.